Well, hello. <laughs> I didn't get the, the signal in my ear. I didn't hear the beep. I didn't know we were on, but I guess we're on because uh, it's recording. And uh, hello, I'm Philip Martin. This is on film, on um, video. And um, God, it's June 2021. It's in the, we're in the middle of June. Middle of, well, summer actually starts in a couple of days, I think, so we're not quite in real summer, high summer yet. Uh, I'm a little discombobulated because I just had a very strange experience. If you're looking at the iPad now and you're watching me or whatever, uh, you go back to your um, movie style on, on there and look at the platform diving column by Courtney Lanning. Um, She's writing about a movie called Luca that comes out, um, what, I don't know what it comes out on, is it, um, I guess it's the Disney, Disney Plus, yes, it comes out on Disney Plus because it's Pixar, it, can't, it, came, it comes out today, and she's writing about it, and I wrote a headline for it, and I don't know, at this point, I do not know whether that headline survived our strenuous copy editing procedure, I don't know if it got through the desk or not because uh, I'm doing this a little earlier in the week than, than you might think. But the headline I wrote, because Luca is about a little kid who turns into a sea monster, my headline was, his name is Luca. He lives on the ocean floor. Which you probably got as an allusion to the uh, Suzanne Vega song, Luca, from 1987, which starts out, my name is Luca. I live on the second floor, you know, and it's about an abused kid and it's all that. And it's like, and that song launched a thousand parodies back in the day. My favorite was uh, Kelly Trapuka. He plays for the Utah Jazz. But anyway, uh, so I'm very proud of this headline. Now, whether the headline makes it in the newspaper or not, that's up to our quality control experts. But I'm proud of it, and I'm going to, like, Waste not, want not. I'm using it here in case it's not there. Uh, so at least some of you will get the joke. But you know who didn't get the joke was the guy, the, the young lady, who wrote the story. I said, I wrote a good headline for you. I sent her an email. And I, I don't know if it's going to survive the desk or not, whether they're going to let us use it or not. And she wrote back. She goes, oh, that's a good headline. It's very SpongeBob. And I was like, okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, then I thought about it, so I sent her the video for Luca, the song by Suzanne Vega, and she sent me back a note that says, I've never heard that song before. They should have used it in the movie. So she didn't get my headline. I, that, and that's okay. And I, I, a lot of people maybe under the age of 45, 45 now, would maybe not get that headline. I, I get that, but it just seems to me like Someone says Luca, like Luca Doncic, or, or, or you know, uh, he plays for the Dallas Mavs, uh, <laughs> would get the joke, but they don't get the joke because they don't have the same cultural frame of reference that we have. It's sort of, you know, it's a sliding scale and stuff like that. And I have to constantly remind myself that uh, people don't necessarily know about 70s cinema or even 80s cinema or certainly not 60s cinema and you know you don't people don't know who exactly I mean they they might think of Ned Beatty as the guy who did the voice in the Toy Story films you know it's 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 a it's a strange intimation of mortality when you run into you know uh, moments like this where I thought everybody was going to love my headline and everybody was going to get my headline especially in the you know sort of environment that I thrive in which is our sort of newsroom where people are literate and people you know are exposed to all these um, you know pop culture references whether they want to be or not uh, I figured that uh, it would at least go over in the newsroom and you know in our exploded newsroom that's still operating in everybody's you know houses bedrooms, apartments around the state, that it would still nevertheless, you know, be resonant with those people. But, you know, then, it, you know, I've got Courtney who, no, not her fault. I mean, um, 
she's younger than Luca. That that song. I mean, so you know, she just never heard it. Mm, okay. One thing that I've really I want to talk to. I do want to do a couple housekeeping things in this in this issue in this edition of um, of on film. I want to talk about a couple things. We're thinking about number one. Uh, revamping our home movies a little bit. Now it's always been, let me see, it's always been like dedicated to actual physical DVD product that you know you can get out and put on your thing. Um, and that's kind of what we we, we kind of like it that way because there still are a lot of people who are interested in collect DVDs and have their own libraries and still like physical media like me I still like physical media because it makes me feel wealthy because it, it, it satisfies some psychological urge I have to own things and so you know I think a lot of us are like that that we don't quite feel the same way when we have a copy of a movie that's you know living on a digital drive someplace out in the cloud or whatever. I mean, I just got uh, the four uh, Harrison Ford movies, and I've I've got them digitally, so I have them. I can watch them anytime I want to. Here's the four um, Harrison Ford Indiana Jones movies, uh, and I've got them living on this cloud. But it doesn't feel like I actually own them. It's the same thing with my record collection. I mean, which is now I look at my iTunes here, which I can see, and I have 129,684 uh, tracks. But it doesn't feel like it. It doesn't feel like it did the days when I had the big cases, you know, the records that would fill this room, which at one point I had. And there are practical reasons not to have that. Um, but it just doesn't feel the same. But we're still catering to, because to, to be frank, our demographic skews a little bit older. I mean, the people who read newspapers, even then they read them in the you know on the iPad, tend to be you know an older demographic. And you know, in the long run, I don't know what how well that bodes for us. But you know, give me five years, I'll be fine. Um, but more and more, I'm concerned. And, and Karen is concerned, who writes a column, that it's sort of like, well, you know, we're writing about this, but we're not writing about that. And so why sh should we privilege the shimmy disc over, um, you know, the other product that's out there? And it's a good question. And I, I think the real answer is, is that because it's pretty easy to segregate these DVDs you know these physical things that are coming out every week and we say we got six DVDs that are coming out this week that are dropping on Tuesday or Wednesday whenever they drop and we can you know look at them and talk about them and you know it gives you some leeway to go into the Criterion Collection stuff into some of the Arrow film stuff and the classic stuff that comes back and it, it's a good way to actually talk about the movies which is what this whole section's about is to talk about, you know, film and how film relates to the way we live now. Oh, bang. Okay. That's my microphone. Um, but within a number, within a few weeks, we're going to start incorporating, we're going to loosen it up a little bit. We're going to have more of the streaming stuff that's coming online and more of the stuff that you can get other ways. And we're going to try to give you like a signal about where you can get it like if it's just VOD and you're able to rent it through the normal usual suspect channels like Amazon Prime iTunes things like that we'll put that on there if it's an Amazon Prime thing if it's a Netflix thing like for instance this week um, there's a Kevin Hart movie um, Fatherhood which is coming out of Netflix and that was a candidate for something we would review we didn't review it for a number of reasons. Number one is that we just don't have eyes and brains enough to cover everything that opens every week now. And so fatherhood did not get, in, in, unless we ran out of space, because I did s secure a wire review of it. I just, I just did that. I just okay, put that on hold in case we need it. I don't think we will. But it would give us a chance to write about something like fatherhood that's coming out. And um, the way Karen does it, 
you know, it's not a full review. It's not necessarily a, you know, a full review. It's, it's, it's like, you know, this is what we've heard, what we know, what we, you know, we used to actually review all these things, but it just becomes like unmanageable after a while. You cannot spend your whole life watching product. Um, believe me, I have tried. Um, but so we're going to try to loosen that up a little bit and make it a little bit more consumer friendly. The other thing I want to talk about, and I've talked about this t before, it's, and I don't know exactly how to approach it, but we are having an increasing problem determining what is worth our time. Because, like I said, some things like the fatherhood uh, film that's opening on Netflix might be more worth our time than, say, 12 Mighty Orphans, the Sony Classics film that's opening theatrically. Now, I don't think so, because I could tell you a couple of reasons why. It's because uh, 12 Mighty Orphans is a football movie, and it's a Texas football movie, and it's written by Jim Dent, who has some connections to Arkansas, and I think a lot of people here are going to be interested in that movie in particular. So, yeah, that's a bad example. I shouldn't have thrown it out there, but was the one I was thinking of that, you know, is it really most of the country, I think fatherhood is going to have a bigger cultural footprint than 12 Mighty Orphans. I don't think 20, 12 Mighty Orphans. It's hard to say for me. I, I don't think it's that good a movie. Um, I didn't review it. I did watch it because I was interested in you know, seeing how it was presented, and I was interested, and, and I've read the book, okay, so I think the book is much better, and I write in my uh, new movies column about Jim Dent, the author of 12 Mighty Orphans, you might want to check that out if you haven't, uh, but, you know, it, it's a close call, it's a close call, we have a limited amount of space still, even though we theoretically have the whole internet you know, we have all this stuff. We're still putting out a product that's designed and that fits on the iPad and is sort of formatted as pages. We still make cuts on the page because that's just the way that's just the way our design aesthetic is. We want to, you know, give you something that looks like a news. And we also have physical newspapers, too, so it's not totally like that. But there is a way that we could add pages, you know, electronically, digital, and we could put more stuff in there if we needed to. The problem is that, you know, basically I'm a one-man department. I'm, I get lots of help um, from Emily and Joe and my great freelance guys, um, Piers and Dan and Courtney, who's not a freelancer, and Karen, who's not a freelancer, but helps me out because they're nice. They're nice people. They help me out. Um, but what we really need is we really need, you know, like I need to, I need a list like on Monday morning of all the movies that are opening theatrically in Arkansas. Now, right now, that's impossible for me to procure because the only way I could procure it was if I did the legwork myself and I don't have time to do the legwork because as some people understand, I do other things. Um, and we don't have anybody doing that right now. Maybe we will get someone doing that and maybe we will be able to make uh, different kinds of decisions about what we're covering and what we're not, not covering. Like this week, I mean, we're guessing a lot of the times. I mean, we thought that maybe Les Notres, uh, Canadian, French Canadian film, was going to open. So I have a review of that ready. It's not opening anywhere in Arkansas that I know of, which is, again, is a difficult thing because I don't check every theater in Arkansas. And there's, Northwest Arkansas is a big blind spot for me right now. Courtney kind of helps out up there, but it's kind of a big blind spot for me. Um, I don't even check all the Little Rock theaters. What I basically do is do what you would do, which is I go to comingsoon.net and look to see if there's anything opening that I'm surprised about, you know, on Friday. And sometimes it's too late for me to do anything about it by the time I find that out. So what we're hoping to do is get somebody in place to actually maybe do this on the, the week before and help us out a little bit. It'd help out if the theaters would help us out too, but I don't think they always know because they're not always booked by people locally. Now, the exception would be Riverdale and the string of 
theaters that uh, Matt Smith owns and operates in Arkansas. Uh, he generally knows what's coming, and he generally tells us in a timely way, in a timely fashion. Uh, the other theaters are booked out of state by people who, you know, are are booking it for the theater owners or for the for the chains. So it's it's a little different. <sighs> Maybe that's too inside baseball, but I just want to be transparent with people and tell you that sometimes we're going to miss films that are opening. And sometimes we might even run reviews of films that don't open here right away. And the reason is, is because it's still more art than science. And I would like it to be more science than it is now. But I, we're putting out the product we're putting out, and I think it's pretty good. So, And I'm happy with the writing, and I'm happy with the people we have on board so there you go we're just doing the best we can one other thing I want to bring up and that is that uh, in July if you are of a certain age and inclination you can come to Riverdale Theater at nine o'clock I think nine o'clock on Thursday mornings and you can sit in my class uh, my life quest class you have to register through life quest of Arkansas uh, and there's a fee, and you have to go to the website, Les Life Quest of Arkansas, just look it up, Google it. And uh, I'm going to be showing movies. I think I've got four weeks. I'm going to show uh, two really nice westerns, The Gunfighter and um, My Darling Clementine. Uh, probably Don't Look Now from the 70s, and I haven't decided on the fourth film yet, but uh, I have a pretty good idea. I think I might show an 80s film. I think I might show... Uh, a Michael Mann movie from the 80s um, and we're going to sit around and talk about them afterwards I always love doing that it's uh, a lot of fun I've been doing it on Zoom for the past year and it's no fun to do it that way because I don't have the interaction with um, you know the people who've come to watch the movie uh, so we'll do that this year uh, we're going to go back in July and that's going to feel real regular to me it's going to feel like we're actually doing what we used to do back in the day, and I'm, that's that's going to be great. So if you're interested in that, I do, again, urge you to, to contact the people at LifeQuest. Get registered. Don't just show up at the theater. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be enough seats right now because they're talking about, you know, you know the biggest theater I think has got 90 seats, and we might have more people signed up than that, which is both great and kind of horrifying. Um so we'll see uh, but anyway if you're interested in that I'm letting you know about it I am letting you know about it just so you know you can't say you weren't warned and um, come see me come see come, come, come watch movies with me okay last week we did a whole 30 minutes we're not doing a whole 30 minutes today because <laughs> it's <laughs> technical stuff means that I really shouldn't run that long because my computer is only so fast and only so much room on it and I can't always clear stuff off like I want to so we're going to cut this off now we're going to say come back see us next week uh, next week is fast and furious week uh, this week is hitman bodyguard week uh, it's going to be like that for the rest of the summer there's going to be like a big picture every week when well, whether they be good or not I don't know but it's only one way to find out, and that's go see them. And you can now. You can go see them. So do it, because we want theaters to survive, and we want all the other cool stuff, too. So take care. See you later. Bye.